Hello, in this JavaScript programming lesson, we will demonstrate how to execute special script when the user scrolls to the bottom of the content on your page. You can see this effect right now if you have a Facebook account and you scroll down your Facebook timeline. Facebook executes new Ajax requests each time you scroll to the bottom of the page content. And what it does is loads in more dynamic data to the page if and only if the user happens to scroll down to the bottom then it just automatically sends an Ajax request to load in more dynamic content. And other large-scale dynamic websites also use this approach to achieve efficient database data rendering in a smart, modern way. <coughs> Before we begin the lesson, let's take a look at the finished product of what we will be scripting using an HTML5 document in JavaScript today. Okay, this is the exact thing that you'll be learning how to build within this tutorial. Now what I've done is I've created a large image just to be a placeholder for page content and it's about 2,000 pixels high. So you can see I have a scroll bar here that appears and I have a lot of content that I can scroll in that window pane there because the content on my page is 2,000 pixels high. Now everything is activated, the script is activated when people scroll the window. So whenever I start scrolling you're going to see these numbers come to life and this number on the left represents the height the vertical height of your content in pixels and this number represents how much you scroll down into the page or how much the user can see into the page how many pixels now take close note when I get to the bottom of the page now watch what happens to the content on the page there's going to be new dynamic content that is popped into the page only when I scroll to the bottom and you can tell by this scroll bar here its height will decrease a good amount letting us know that there's a lot more content on the page we can keep scrolling down so let's go down right when we get to the bottom and you can notice your numbers moving so now I'll scroll down to the bottom now keep an eye on this scroll bar here boom you see right when I got to the bottom a new blue div appeared it can be any height you want it doesn't even have to be a set height. It could just be a whole bunch of content that makes a dynamic height. Then when you get to the bottom of that, a new Ajax request would fire off here and bam. Then you have a lot more content on the page. And you see how small our little scroll bar scroller is? That means we have a lot of content there. And you'll see it's not much code at all to achieve this effect. Okay, fire up your favorite code editor. Create a new HTML file to work within. And start with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document and then you can follow along with me my friend okay alright let's go okay now in the head of the document we're gonna start a script element make its type text JavaScript and go down a couple of lines and make sure we close our script tag now go down one more line and let's open up a style tag and then let's close the style tag and in the opening style tag let's define that type and that's gonna be text CSS now before we script to some HTML elements and style those elements, let's put them in place. We're going to have two divs. In the first div, we're going to give an ID of status. The second div, we're going to give an ID of wrap. Okay, so the wrap div is going to be the main page content that you want to scroll down and hit bottom on. And this div, ID status, that's only for developer purposes, which you can remove it after, after the tutorial. Now inside of the status div, we're going to put some default values. We're just going to put a zero, the pipe, a space, and another zero. And in the wrap tag as content, I'm going to put all of my web page content. And for mine, it's just a simulated image that's going to simulate my web page content. You would have a whole bunch of HTML markup or dynamic data rendered into your wrap tag, or your wrap div, rather. Now let's apply the following CSS into our style element. So what we're doing with these two lines is we're targeting the divs. And those are the two divs that we just put in place down here. ID status and ID wrap. Status has position of fixed and font size 24. And remember you can remove this after you develop. I just put that in place, the status div, to give you a little bit of indication on the mathematics that's happening. Now div wrap has styles of width 800 pixels wide and margin is set to zero pixels and auto. Now what that does is it sets zero pixels for the top and bottom and then auto for the left and right. 
This is the way you center any div within its content container. So if you want to center a div on a web page, that's how you do it. Or if you want to center some kind of element within another element, that's how you do it. And we specified it to be 800 pixels wide. So it'll be 800 pixels wide centered. And since our status div is position fixed, it's going to be in the top left corner no matter where we're scrolling on the page at all times. Okay, now it's fun time. We're going to apply the JavaScript. Now the first thing you want to do is set up the event handling. So the object that we want to listen for the on scroll event is window dot on scroll. So we're targeting the window object and its on scroll event property. And that's going to be equal to a function that we want to fire off every time the window is scrolled. So anytime the window is scrolled by the user, a function is going to execute and we're going to call that function Y handler. You can name it anything you want. Just put a semicolon to break that line. Now you can double click that and press control C to copy it and then right above that line type in function paste in the function name Y handler open close parentheses open a curly brace go down a couple of lines and close off your curly brace to make your nice function nest so here's how it works window dot on scroll is listening and it's gonna fire off a function called Y handler anytime that the user scrolls the window up or down so this Y handler function is constantly firing off as the window is being scrolled. Now the first line in that function, we want to target the wrap div. So we'll say var wrap is equal to document dot get element by ID, single quote, single quote, close parentheses, and then semicolon. In between your two single quotes, you're going to put the ID that you want to target on the page, wrap. So now we have the wrap element as an object in JavaScript. Now in the next line, let's put a little comment in for ourselves. It says get page content height. To get that, we'll create a new variable and name it content height. And that's going to be equal to the wrap object dot offset height property. And then you put a semicolon in. So you just target the wrap element on the page's offset height property to get the content height. That way you know in your JavaScript exactly how much content uh, pixel wise vertically you have on the page. And it could be any dynamic number because you can load in any type of dynamic data and not be aware before the page loads of how high that content would be. So this number will arrive to you dynamically. Now in the next line we're going to place another comment in for ourselves and it says gets the vertical scroll position now to get the vertical scroll position we'll create a variable and name it y offset and that's going to be equal to window page y offset so to get the vertical scroll position you target the window objects page y offset property this lets you know where the user is in their scrolling of your page exactly where they are in that scroll position okay now this next line is really the only tricky line here we're going to call this var y and that's going to be equal to y offset plus the windows dot inner height property now if you want to understand about window dot inner height and actually what value it gives you you can go to the world of webcraft and type in get window size and search that and it'll bring you to a an article that I wrote called JavaScript get window dimensions for the browser and you can see here the inner and outer dimensions it just gives you the window height and the browser and the one we're dealing with in the tutorial right now is the inner dimensions so these blue arrows are pointing to that and this right here in the code window that inner height that is giving us this value from here from this the tip of this blue arrow down to right here the bottom of the browser window that's the value that we're getting just so you understand exactly what this little piece of code is getting it's a good way to visually represent it so this y variable so this y variable is the sum of y offset plus the window dot inner height because page y offset just shows how much they've scrolled but you also have to account in the windows dot inner height if you want to target the bottom of the page which is what we're doing in this tutorial we're targeting the bottom of the page we want something to happen when the bottom of the page is hit by the user when they scroll 
Okay, there's just a few more lines left. The next thing we're going to do is a conditional statement. And here it is. We're saying if y, the value that we attained here from our calculations, if y is greater than or equal to content height. You know what content height is. That's the height of all the content within your div. You know what I'm saying, man? So if y is greater than or equal to content height, meaning if the user hit the bottom. That's basically what that translates to. If the user scrolls to the very bottom and hits it. Actually, that means if they go over it or they have hit it. So if that occurs, then and only then do you want to put more HTML content into your wrap div here on the page. Like at Facebook, when you get to the bottom of your timeline, they run an AJAX request. So we're going to write a note right here to you guys. Ajax call to get more dynamic data goes here. And if you need a tutorial about how to run a custom Ajax call without using frameworks, we have that at Develop PHP in the JavaScript video tutorial section. Or you can just use jQuery or another framework that makes JavaScript more easy for people that don't know how to program JavaScript yet. Now, the very last two lines are simple. And they are just affecting the status div, which like I said, you can remove those after you program this application. You can just comment those out. But at first, you might want to have them there so you can see what the uh, values are as you're scrolling. So what we do here is we target the status div, just like we target the wrap div up top earlier. We run document.getElementById status div. So that puts status in a little object for us there. Then we can just say status dot inner HTML property is equal to the content height number and then that pipe and then the amount that the user has scrolled so far towards the bottom. We have to put a class a CSS for new data because new data is actually a new div that's being popped into the wrap element. So that's how you're dynamically putting new data into the wrap element and you can put divs any kind of content you want in there and this content would normally be coming back from an Ajax call to get more dynamic data from the database or whatever you don't just stick a static div in here like I did you put your dynamic content coming back from PHP or whatever in your Ajax request that's what goes here you got it each time the user hits the bottom of the page so last thing in the CSS let's put div class new data we're going to target any div with a class of new data on the page and we're going to have a few of them as much as the user keeps hitting the bottom that's how many are going to appear and I'm making the height let's just make the height 1000 background is blue and we gave it a little bit of margin top and bottom just to separate them from each other when they load in now let's run this file preview in browser chrome now when we hit the bottom watch what happens boom we got a thousand more pixels worth of data to scroll through. Boom, 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 boom. Now look how small our little scrolly is. Look how much data we have now. Okay, so that's how it works. Now mine is static. Now yours would be connected to an Ajax request right here. Like I said, you'd put your content coming back plus equals into the wrap element. Plus equals compounds data into that inner HTML of that wrap element. If you just put an equal sign here, it would overwrite what's in there each time. You don't want that. You want plus equal so it keeps the data that's already in the wrap element and just adds more to it. Okay, so that's how it works. And these couple of lines here are basically all of the mathematical logic that you're using. You're getting the page content height and then you're getting the vertical scroll position that the user is at currently on the page. And then you use Y here to calculate the windows at inner height to add that to the Y offset to make sure that we're targeting the very bottom of the page in the user's browser window. No matter what their window size is. Okay, so I hope I explained all of that well enough. And if you're a beginner and you were able to grasp what we were doing here, bravo to you because this is kind of intermediate. Alright, so I'll have this script available at developphp.com underneath the video. And I'll put a link to that uh, page of developphp in the video description at YouTube so all you guys can get to it. Okay, so that is how a lot of large-scale, dynamically driven websites will...
program JavaScript scroll bottom load dynamic content. So when the user scrolls to the bottom, you load dynamic content. And you can keep loading and loading and loading. Now it's up to you guys to tweak this and refine it. Maybe you want to put more conditions in there to stop things from loading. Okay, that about wraps it up. I hope you guys found that helpful, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.